viewers today in this session we will be talking about something different we will be talking about the unusual structures of dna the so called non canonical structures these structures are formed as a result of different kind of dna sequence motifs and we should know about them as because the presence of such non canonical structures in dna leads to the development of different kinds of diseases so let us now continue or see what are non canonical structures before we move into the dna non canonical structures let us first examine the different kind of dna sequences we know that normally the secondary structure of dna is nothing but a linear double helical form but in this section we will see that the dna secondary structures deviates from its double helical form to different types now when does it deviate it deviates when the dna sequence motifs consist of inverted repeats palindromes mirror repeats direct repeats homopurine homopyrimidine etc further on if we look at this figure what do we see this figure reflects the different kinds of base sequences or different kinds of dna sequence motifs so let's say with start with direct repeats as we can see this is a direct repetition of a set of nucleobases whereas the inverted repeats is the bases or the set of bases are inverted with respect to each other whereas the palindromic sequences contains inverted repeats without any intervening sequences whereas the mirror repeats are nothing but the mirror reflection of a set of bases now depending upon the kind of dna sequence motif present the unusual structure of dna varies so first why it is important now first as we can see the non canonical dna structure so it is deviating from the duplex dna as shown in this diagram to the three way junction dna to the g quadruplex dna structure four way junction dna so we can see there is a difference in the structure of dna further on what is the function of this non canonical dna structure the function of this non canonical dna structure is that the presence of such dna non canonical structures sometimes leads to mutation and this mutation develops in the formation of neurodegenerative disorders or in very life threatening diseases like in cancer so we should know about how the non canonical structures of dna are formed in vivo let's start with the cruciform dna the cruciform dna as you can see it is a cross shaped structure so it is when the dna becomes cross shaped in nature why it is formed it is formed due to the presence of palindromic sequences now what are palindromic sequences those sequences or the sequence of bases that read the same from forward or from the backward direction as a result now if we look or closely examine the above top figure then we will see that due to the presence of complementary strands in the same strand intra strand so as a result there is a formation of hydrogen bond in the intra strand and as a result there is a disruption of inter strand hydrogen bonding as well as we can find that the cruciform dna consists of a stem and a loop structure the loops denotes the unpaired bases and the stem where the hydrogen bond bases are present now what is the function of this cruciform structure the cruciform structure is recognized by proteins these proteins play a very important role during dna recombination in formation of nucleosome during dna replication repair so the cruciform structure is involved in this three physiological processes namely recombination nucleosome formation dna replication etc if there is malfunctioning of cruciform structure then it has been implicated in diseases like werner syndrome so there comes the first unusual structure of dna 
move to the second one. What is the second one? That is the triplex DNA. The triplex DNA was first discovered in the year 1957 by Alexander Rich. As shown in this diagram, we can see here the triple helix consists of three helices. But we know that DNA is a double helical molecule. Then how it is formed? Now if we see the stoichiometry for the formation of a triple helix requires that one strand should contain a homopurine sequence while the other two strands should have homopyrimidine sequences. Now if we look at the another important point is that these kind of triple helices were found when synthetic oligo DA was allowed to recombine with oligo DT. Fortunately, it did not form a double helix. It formed a triple helix. The triple helix is also formed when a synthetic strand is bound to the duplex DNA at the major groove. Now, the major groove serves as the source of chemical information. It is at the major groove that there are two potential hydrogen bonding sites, namely the seventh nitrogen atom of adenine and guanine and the sixth amino group of adenine. These two serve as potential for hydrogen bond. Now, on further examination of triple helix, we find that there are two types of base triplet. One is CGC, another is TAT. So, here the triplet consists of Hookstein and Watson-Crick hydrogen bonds. The Hookstein is an alternate pair of hydrogen bonding and as a result, it results in the formation of triple helix. Similarly, we have the reverse Hookstein base pairing, which is formed by base pairing of TAA-CGG. Again, so we can say the repeating structure of triple helix is nothing but a base triplet. Now further on, the HDNA is also found in DNA. HDNA is nothing but a kind of a triple helix when the DNA sequences are in mirror repeats. As a result, we can see the structure here as shown in diagram. It becomes heme shaped and it is stabilized by means of hydrogen ions. So this is another kind of triple helix. Now this triple helix plays a very important role during regulation of gene expression, play an important role in RNA synthesis synthesis in initiation and in termination of replication and recombination. The triple helix which is formed can be formed within the same molecule, so known as intramolecular triple helix or within the two molecule that is intermolecular triple helix. The intramolecular triple helix, it serves as a very important regulatory role in gene expression. The disease which is hereditary persistence of fetal hemoglobin in which the fetal hemoglobin gene is always expressed is caused because the intramolecular triple helix is not formed in the promoter region of the genes coding for the human globin genes. As a result, the fetal hemoglobin gene is always expressed and it leads to the disease. Now on further on, we can see that the intramolecular triple helix is also important during DNA replication. So as we can see, if there is a formation of a triple helix, it will pause the replication enzyme of the DNA polymerase enzyme will pause at the replication fork and it will cause termination of replication. So in this way, we can say that the triple helix also plays an important role during DNA replication. Now let us examine the role of intermolecular triple DNA or the triple helix. Now this serves as a very important role. The synthetic strand can bind to the duplex strand if it finds a region of homology with a gene present in the duplex strand. As a result of binding of the synthetic strand to the duplex strand, it causes inhibition of transcription as it does not allow the transcription factors to bind as shown in this diagram as well as it does not allow the RNA polymerase 2 enzyme to bind to, to the duplex strand. Apart from this, the triplex DNA also might serve as an activator of transcription because it displaces the homopyrimidine strand and as a result the enzymes responsible for transcription might act on it and cause transcription. Thus, the synthetic strand will cause the formation of triple helix which can be used in controlling the silencing of certain important genes involved in important diseases like cancer.
next important unusual structure and this is now the topic of discussion in the this century that is the DNA quadruplex structure. The DNA quadruplex as the name suggests it is a four stranded DNA secondary structure compared to the normal duplex DNA secondary structure. Now these kind of structures are formed whenever there is sequences rich in G bases. They are found at the ends of telomeres and near the oncogene promoters. Now these sequences are shown in this diagram contains nothing but stacked arrays of G quadrate. Let us see what is G quadrate. The G quadrate is nothing but it is a square planar platform of guanine residues or rather of four guanine residues to each other by cyclic Hoogstein hydrogen bond. And as a result of formation of cyclic Hoogstein hydrogen bond, it results in the formation of a G quadrate. The four G residues can come from four parallel strands which is known as intermolecular, tetrameric or they may come from the two antiparallel strand that is intermolecular dimeric or they can form from four guanine residues present in the same strand known as intramolecular monomeric. Further on, the formation and stabilization of G quadrate requires the presence of potassium ion as it coordinates with the eight electronegative O6 atoms of the stacked guanine quadrates. So as a result, we can see that the G quadrate structure is stabilized by strong hydrogen bonds. Now, the telomeres. As I told you that the G quadruplex structures are present at the telomeres. What are telomeres? These are the end sequences of chromosomes and they play a very important role in cancer. The malfunctioning of telomeres has been implicated in cancer. Now it has been found that the G quadruplex structure is found at the telomeres. Now what happens? Most of the chromosomes contains telomeres. With each cell division, the length of the telomere shortens and thereby the cell reaches apoptosis. In cancer cell, the telomeres keeps on elongating due to the presence of reverse transcriptase enzyme telomerase. Now this telomerase thereby makes the cell keep, keeps on dividing and as a result, it develops in cancer. Now, if the G quadruplex structure is found or formed at the end of the telomeres, then the telomerase enzyme is no longer able to act on the telomere and thus it leads to apoptosis. So hence, we can say that G quadruplex structure is a potential anti-cancer target. So in this way, we can see how the unusual structure of DNA plays an important role in gene regulation. Apart from this, the other functions of four-stranded DNA is it is involved in regulating gene expression, it is involved in immunoglobulin genes related to antibody diversity, it has been associated with various kind of diseases. Slipped DNA. So what are slip DNA? Now DNA regions with direct repeat symmetry can form slipped spared DNA. It is nothing, if we look at the sequence, it is nothing but a direct repeat of sequences. So as we can see that the sequence TCA, GA, G is repeated again in the next form as TCA, GA, G. So this is an example of direct repeat. Now let us see what happens if there is a direct repeat. Two models of has been proposed in this diagram. What we can see? We can see that there are two copies of direct repeat. Direct repeat 1, direct repeat 2. Now in this way, we can see that the direct repeat 1 copy mispairs with the second copy or with the complementary strand of another copy of a second direct repeat. So as a result, we can see here in this diagram the formation of loops on the either strand. Similarly, in the B2 model also we can see the mispairing of complementary strand and as a result there is a formation of loops. Due to the formation of loops, now what is happening? There is a destabilization of structure or the DNA is becoming or the reading frame will become changed. Let's move to the another figure which shows how the frame shift mutation is co being caused. Frame shift mutation, what is frame shift mutation? Frame shift means the mutation which is occurring due to the change in the reading frame of a protein. 
Now, due to the change in the reading frame of a protein, the base sequences get changed. As a result of change in the base sequence, the amino acid sequence gets changed and as a result, there is a change in the protein struct type. And as a result, that leads to the formation of different kinds of protein. Now, the direct repeats as shown in this diagram, during the normal duplication, it will follow a direct repetitive method. But what will happen if there is a slippage, either in the backward direction or in the forward direction? So, it will lead to the deletion of certain genes when the slippage takes place in the backward and it will cause insertion. And as a result of insertion of fragments or rather of repetitive sequences, it results in the change in the frame shift, again which is causing mutation. Similarly, when the forward slippage is occurring, then what will happen? It will cause deletion of bases and as a result, there is change in the sequence of amino acids and as a result, there is a change in the sequence of the nature of protein. So, we can see that the direct repeats can cause frame shift mutation which will lead to disease. Now, what are the diseases which are caused in this manner? One of the very important disease or very famous disease is the Huntington disease. Apart from the Huntington disease, as shown in this diagram, we can see there is the fragile egg syndrome. The fragile egg syndrome is occurring because the three base pair repetitive sequence or reiterated sequence gets changed and as a result, there is a mutation. So, these are the different morphological features or the symptoms associated with the fragile X syndrome. Now, what is the conclusion we can derive from all this information? The non-canonical structures of DNA plays a very important role in cellular processes. That is, in day-to-day -day living, we always require the presence of such DNA non-canonical structures. The second is, when do they form? The formation of non-canonical structures depends on the type of DNA sequence motifs and on the types of physical environment. Example, the triplex DNA, it is formed not only when the sequence contains homopurine, homopyrimidine sequence, but when it is containing magnesium ion. As a bringing in together of the three negatively charged phosphodiester bonds, it creates a negative charge and hence repulsion, which can only be stabilized by means of positively charged cations. So here, the physical environment plays an important role. Another one is, if the, your non-canonical structures are not properly formed, then it will lead to diseases like cancer, Werner syndrome, fragile X syndrome, etc. Apart from this, the study of non-canonical structures also helps us to understand how to regulate the genes or how to silence the genes. Thank you.